Before we start though, I just wanted to let you know that our workshop that we are building all of this stuff for is going to be on Saturday, March 1st in Boundary Hall in room 112A, uh, which is if you're going through the entrance, it's on your right, it should be right there. Um, and it's from 3 to 6 p.m. I uh, posted up the flyer for it on our Facebook group, oh. but you know, some people can't see it, so I'm telling you all and you'll see flyers for it starting tomorrow. Um, but that's going to be a really big thing. Uh, obviously, if you have demo pieces that you've already made or are working on, uh, that's when we're going to really need to bring them in. So tonight we're going to be covering different types of foam, uh, surface techniques, and um, various tools and how to use them so that you don't badly hurt yourself. Because uh, yeah, we don't need any preparations for this project. Okay. Um, so why don't we actually start with tools, seeing as we're going to use those uh, later on. This is a hot glue gun. Um, as the name would indicate, it gives hot glue. I know it sounds stupid to say this, but there are so many people who will burn themselves with this and then be like, ah, oh, fuck, that's hot. <laughs> so I'm telling you, it's hot. It gets really hot. Uh, hot glue essentially takes this stuff, which is like a um, plastic and melts it into a liquid form and then you can use it to adhere various stuff together. Um, hot glue doesn't work on everything, but it works on a lot of stuff. Wood, metal, some types of foam, although some types it'll melt and I'll cover that later. Um, if you don't have a hot glue gun, you can get one at like Home Depot or Lowe's or Michael's or Walmart and they're like five bucks. It's one of the best tools you'll ever buy. It's totally worth it to get one. Um, in terms of hot glue, there are two different temperatures of hot glue that we really need to worry about. There's low melting temperature hot glue, which is excellent for if you're doing craft stuff. Uh, and then there's high melting temperature hot glues, which is much better for our purposes. Um, the high temperature hot glue is superior uh, in a lot of different ways because it holds stronger. But um, obviously, as the name suggests, it requires a higher temperature to melt it. Um, which is a good thing because if you take your arm and you leave it in your car while you're inside the convention hall all day in the summer in Georgia, it can actually get hot enough that your hot glue will melt and fall apart, which doesn't happen with the high melting temperature hot glue. So that's the hot glue gun. The other second most important piece of equipment that you can possibly get yourself is one of these. This is a heat gun. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot, and I think they have them at Michael's too, although those I think are mostly for like floral baskets and stuff. Um, I've got the uh, Wagner 2700, something like that, and I got it uh, because it comes with adjustable temperatures. You can go from 350 degrees uh, up to <laughs> 1350 degrees, which just so you guys know, would be hot enough to melt glass. Um, so again, heat gun, it's hot. Don't point it at yourself. Don't point it at paper or anything that's going to burn, and don't put it on the carpet where it's going to melt the hole in it. Don't point it at anyone you, anyone you care about, because you yeah. don't like. Like, the way that you use this is um, once you plug it in and it gets hot, you want to get a couple inches away from the surface that you are working on and just go back and forth in like a sort of hair dryer type motion. Um, no matter what they might say on the internet, a heat gun is not the same thing as a hot air dryer. A hair dryer's maximum temperature is only 150 degrees. This is twice that of its lowest setting. Not the same thing at all. Um, so definitely get yourself a heat gun. It is the second most useful tool you will ever use. Um, I meant to bring my Dremel, though I didn't. Um, so uh, get yourself a Dremel tool. It is the most useful tool you will ever use. It can do everything. It can saw, it can cut, it can drill, it can etch, it can do just about everything. It's the perfect tool. Um, you get them at like Walmart or Home Depot. Mine cost like 20 bucks and it's seriously, I use it all the time for like just about everything. Um, so that's pretty much it from an equipment standpoint. Now, obviously, you guys being art students already know how to use 
use exacto knives without cutting yourself, I would call it. <laughs> I can't assume, but um, exacto knives are great and they will cut through all of these materials. Uh, I will also recommend that if you're cutting like the EVA foam, particularly the thick stuff, uh, you might want to get yourself a soldering knife. Uh, if you do get a soldering iron, you can use the hot knife attachment to cut through this like a hot knife through butter. Again, it's hot. Don't cut yourself with it because it will both cut and burn at the same time. Um, the hot knife attachment though makes quick work of EVA foam like this and it is an amazingly useful little tool. As well as you can use it for if you want to attach metal or something. Um, use it for its intended purpose. You can get soldering irons that run off of uh, gas, like butane, or you can get uh, electric ones. I have a butane one myself, uh, and it works great. Um, so that's pretty much it in the way of actual tools that you're going to be using. Um, in terms of cutting stuff, you will find that it may be easier with a jigsaw or even a bandsaw, because you can cut this stuff on a bandsaw. Um, but if you don't have access to one of those, the handsaw works fine. So, okay, so let's start talking about different types of foam. And starting over on this edge, this is EVA foam. EVA foam is, um, I've forgotten what it stands for, it's ethyl vinyl something. I don't remember the, the A part, but essentially what it is, is it's um, like this semi-flexible, semi-rigid type of open cell foam. There are two different kinds of foam in the world. There's open cell foam, which is flexible and you know awesome and soft, and then there's closed cell foam, which is rigid and not soft, and you don't want to hit people with this. Um, although, I, mean, I suppose you could, but it would break before the person does, but you still, you don't want to use it. Um, so, yeah, um, and I, I passed this around on the first meeting, so you guys already know what it feels like. You know what this feels like if you don't work with it. So I won't bother passing this around again. But EVA foam comes in three different uh, widths for our purposes. There's the thick stuff, which uh, this is flooring mat that you can get at Home, um, you can get it at Home Depot. Com. They don't have it in the store for some reason. You can get it at Sears. Yeah, if you want to take the trip. Um, a little bit further than the series, Harbor Freight actually also sells that in four packs for about seventy-nine dollars. Okay. Yeah, Harbor Freight has it. Um, I got mine at Sears. Uh, you can also get them in camping stores. Uh, if you get like one of those long bed rolls, it's made out of the same material. You just have to make sure that it is, because there's some that have like a more spongy material. That's a different kind of open cell foam, and it won't work for what we're trying to do. Um, these two are the 8th inch and the 16th inch craft foams. They are exactly the same stuff as this. Uh, it's just a different thickness. Uh, you can get craft foams at, you know, Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, any of those. I got the uh, 16th inch stuff um, in a long roll that's, I don't, I don't even know, like 10 feet by like one foot. And I've already used some of it um, just from like a dollar tree. Dollar Tree is your friend, you will want to visit it frequently. Um, and crack foam is awesome stuff because when you heat it, you can change its shape and it will stay that way. Um, which is what we would be using the heat gun for. And uh, if we have enough battery life left, I will actually demonstrate that later. Um, the next one we have is this. This is expansion foam. It is originally used for uh, if you're making insulation. It's for like caulking around like edges of windows and doors and you know making everything airtight. Um, this little can would make probably about a cubic foot of expansion foam. But one thing I will tell you, and in fact there's several things you need to know about this stuff. Um, first of all, see this little tube? This will get clogged up with foam uh, pretty well immediately after you stop using it. And since the foam sets up in about five minutes, this will be full of foam that you cannot use ever again. So you have to use it pretty well the entire can all at once. Um, the second thing you need to know about expansion foam is, it says on the can, 
that you need to shake vigorously for a minimum of 30 seconds. Do it way more than that, because the more you shake it, the more expansion you're going to get. Otherwise, you're going to get like this little rope of foam that's not going to cover very much and not be very useful for anything. Um, this stuff uh, is the um, craft stuff, it is the great stuff expansion foam. Uh, it's the only kind I could find at the Home Depot, but they carried Home Depot Lowe's pretty well any hardware store. Um, it expands about an inch. Now, the good news about this is that you can layer it. The bad news is you have to wait for it to cure before you layer it, which goes back to the you need to use it all at once kind of thing. Um, and the second thing I need to tell you about this is that you will probably need to get twice as much of this stuff as you expect you're going to need. Um, because it does not by any means lay down an even layer uh, or an even, even depth. It comes out really bubbly. And, um, you know, if you want to try and smooth it out, you're going to need to go back over it with multiple coats. Um, like I said, it was designed for insulation, not really for art, but, you know, we can use it. Um, that stuff you're going to want to cover with masking tape or paper mache over the top um, because although they claim that you can paint it, they lie. <laughs> you cannot actually paint it. It liquefies and goes back to a gelatinous state. Um, you can actually uh, cure this stuff as you're spraying it. If you want to, to cure it more quickly, you can hit it with a little spray bottle full of water and that can actually cause it to cure more quickly. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for the foams I have here. Uh, there is one more type of open cell foam that I need to tell you guys about. Uh, that's upholstery foam. Uh, upholstery foam is obviously the stuff that you use in cushions. It's very squishy, it's very soft. Um, you cannot buy it in small amounts, you have to buy the whole big sheet of it. Um, but it can be really good if you want to be simulating like muscles or padding or for large stuff. That's excellent for those purposes. Okay. Now we're going to talk about uh, the hard foams, the open cell foams. Uh, closed cell. Sorry. Um, closed cell foams, pretty well all closed cell foam has the same basic principles. Um, there's two major kinds of closed cell foam. There's the EPO foam, which I have no idea what that's like. And there's the EPS foam, which is the um, expanded polystyrene, which is what this stuff is. Uh, the polystyrene are, you know, the uh, little styrofoam bits that come off, the little bubbles? Yeah. Like, that's what those are. They started off life as tiny little styrene pellets that uh, got put into basically a puffer and blew them up to like 40 times their original size and then they got heat gotten together and they make this stuff. And I'm gonna pass this around, but I'm sure you already know what it feels like. Uh, it's super light, super you know, flexible, well, not really flexible, it'll break pretty easy. But um, polystyrene foam like that, just your basic styrofoam, uh, it, um, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or you know just about anywhere really. Um, you use it for insulation mostly, and it's you know pretty effective stuff. Um, on its own, it's not really so great, but when you get it together with a lot of them, all in one thing, or if you're able to get the big sheets where it comes in multiples like this, um, and then you laminate it together with Gorilla Glue, you can make a much bigger, much thicker shape and just carve right into it. Okay. So you could be like a Gundam. Yeah, you could. I've seen people who do Gundams with this. Uh, the other one, uh, EPS foam that I want to talk about is the Pink Panther foam. Um, Pink Panther foam is also a um, closed cell uh, insulation foam. It comes in two major thicknesses. It comes in the two inch and the one inch. Um, and you can use it for different stuff. This stuff laminates really, really well. Um, but, and I'm gonna pass around this smaller piece, focus on stuff though. Um, 